of you in a while, so I might as well do a review of a anime-adjacent book. Uh, not a book that has been adapted into an anime, but rather a book about making anime, specifically Anime Supremacy by Mizuki Tsujimura. Apologize if I mangled the pronunciation of her name. Like Shirabako, Anime Supremacy goes behind the scenes of how anime is made and does so with women exclusively as the lead of the series. However, unlike Shirabako, the characters of the book aren't working at the same studio or even on the same project. They generally don't even know each other very well. The book shifts between three characters. A production assistant on an anime series that's about to start airing. A woman who is directing a currently airing anime series and an animator from a studio who was working on the aforementioned anime series, but her studio that she's working at is not the lead studio. So I'm not getting too much into character names here, partially because I actually loaded up my copy of the book while putting this together, and I don't have a copy of it in front of me, so for character, for name references, also, to a significant degree, um, like, the, the focus of each of the three characters is to a certain degree over their what their role is in the production of anime uh, with a significant shift with well not significant but with a bit of a twist with the animator so quick explanation of the narrative structure of this book it's a it's a cons I basically her read described as a consecutive narrative or as terms of the, the buzzword for it um the character of e of the subsequent story uh, we do this stage right with the with the character main character of the subsequent story uh, making an appearance in the story immediately preceding, and then once this story or once this story is done, the, the narrative perspective shifts to this story, and then the next character will appear, yeah, in the story in the story immediately following, and so forth and so on as we get through all three stories. Unfortunately, the production assistant does not get to make an appearance in the third story to make things go full circle, which feels like a mixed opportunity. It's a bit like some of Steven Soddenberg's films. Not so much Tarantino. We, we don't get as much with, like, flashbacks and that sort of thing. Um, the only, like, really significant timeline shift is with the animator as she retells the events leading up to where she appears in the director's storyline from her point of view. Um, but that's about it. That said, like, the, the really main focus of the animator storyline is less on the actual act of animation itself and more stuff related to a ra stuff around the anime production process or making the anime, uh, which I thought was an interesting touch. For example, um, again, the, the bit with the... With the where she crosses over with the director is related to doing promotional art for an article in a magazine, and her getting roped into doing that. The and then the rest of her arc is actually more related to anime tourism, with her again getting roped into doing more promotional art in this case for because the anime is based around this particular town, which is also where the studio she works at is located. She gets brought in to assist with doing art related to a planned uh, stamp uh, campaign, stamp book thing, um, for that project. And, uh, and so she's roped into that. And so it's interesting from that perspective in terms of getting into the side of not so much conventional anime, um, for lack of a better term, um, like just the standard, like inside, just strictly related to the anime production process, but getting outside of that in terms of like with the anime tourism and attempts to use anime to promote rural communities and which otherwise would be failing and that sort of thing, which I thought was a nice and interesting touch. In fact, honestly, I'd say that that part is probably the most engaging part of the book. Not to say that the earlier two portions aren't interesting or engaging or didn't have my attention as I read through them, but that one grabbed me in a bit more because it was a perspective that I had not encountered before, particularly since, again, I've seen Shirobako, and even before that, I've seen Animation Runner Kuromi. So I am familiar with the inside, I'm somewhat familiar with the inside baseball, baseball side of things. 
Whereas this is stuff that Shirobako never even touched. In all, I really enjoyed reading the novel. Uh, and honestly, I'd say if you're an anime fan or know someone who is, uh, it's worth giving a read. Not just like recommending to your to your anime fan friend, but like on your own. The book is currently available through Amazon. I also found my copy at, at uh, my local Kitakunia because I'm in Portland and we've got two of those. Um, and so that's it's available there as well. And links to where you can get it will be in the doobly-doo. Buying anything through those links, that link helps support the site and the show and all that stuff. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, it costs me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 